Good afternoon, everyone. Um, this is uh, Dave Gabinet M from the NDC Partnership Support Unit, and I'm actually calling from Bangkok. So thanks, Andreas, for the quick introduction. And of course, I'd like to thank the uh, European Commission, the Eastern Partnership, and the UNDP for, for inviting the NDC Partnership to deliver this keynote presentation. So in this presentation, I will be giving a brief overview of the NDC Partnership. Uh, this is, of course, for those who are not yet familiar with us, and we'll then proceed with the keynote's main topic, which is how nationally determined contributions and national adaptation plans are related to climate finance. I will also be sharing some information on climate finance needs of the countries that are members of the partnership and some of the ways in which we, to our member developed countries, development organizations, and international climate finance institutions are helping countries to better access climate finance. So the NDC partnership, as its name implies, is a global coalition of 114 countries now, both developed and developing, and 81 development partners collaborating together to drive transformational climate action while enhancing sustainable development. We support countries to plan, mobilize, much needed resources to implement their NDCs by leveraging resources from development partners and developed country members. Through our members, we provide developing member countries the means to implement their NDCs through a combination of technical assistance, capacity building, knowledge and information sharing, and also by facilitating access to finance. We also help our member countries and institutions by increasing the visibility and access to their NDC support programs, or in the case of countries, the NDC action plans or NDC implementation plans, and in designing more responsive support programs, making sure that both demand and supply are aligned with each other. We help countries focal points, uh, the focal points that we have in each country uh, through the NDC partnership to broaden their reach, not just for seeking support on NDC implementation, climate finance, but also in terms of knowledge and learning with their piece from peers from other countries. Our longer term vision is, of course, to create coherence between and alignment between climate and development agenda, which, of course, allows for stronger political buy in and momentum that would foster what we all aspire for, which is transformational change. So what are NDCs and NAPs and how are how do they relate to climate finance? According to the UNFCCC, the National Determined Contributions, or NDCs, are at the heart of the Paris Agreement and the achievement of its long-term goals. NDCs embody the efforts of each country to reduce their national emissions and adapt to the impacts of climate change. All 192 Paris Agreement signatory countries are obligated to revise and enhance their NDCs every five years. And we have seen the submissions, the recent submissions from most of you here already, uh, just, just recently. Following the 2020 and 2021 enhancement process, many countries have also included an adaptation in their NDCs. And I will get back to that later. Developing countries are historically responsible for only a small fraction of the GHG and their atmosphere but they often face the greatest impacts from the risk of climate change and the lack of resources to implement their NDC targets. Therefore, based on the common but differentiated responsibility principle, developing countries include both unconditional and conditional contributions to, in their NDC. A conditional contribution is one that countries would undertake if international means of support are provided. And this includes, of course, international climate finance. And during and following the 2020 enhancement, NDC enhancement process, many of the developing countries we've supported have also formulated what they call as NDC implementation plans, roadmaps, or action plans, or strategy for implementation. This in, this, these plans include, among others, the costing of their implementation options, uh, financing strategies for NDC-related projects, as well as ex ante calculations of GHG reductions for each activity that they have laid out in these plans. 
Countries have also set up monitoring, reporting, and verification processes to evaluate investment impacts and inform any adjustments to future NDCs and their NDC implementation plans. Many countries have also set up online platforms from where they can track and monitor the progress of their implementation and the support coming from different donors, IFIs, and development partners. These plans serve as practical and accessible resource mobilization tools from which countries can market and coordinate their needs for NDC implementation. And it also allows donors and development partners alike to review the country's NDC implementation plans so they can also align their intervention options, priorities, and resources for climate action. Another such plan whose conception predates NDCs by about five years is uh, the National Adaptation Plan, or NAP. Following the 2010 Cancun Adaptation Framework, uh, countries formulated and implemented NAPs as a means to identify medium and long-term adaptation needs and developing and implementing strategies and programs to, those, to address those needs. So far, only 22 developing countries have submitted the preparation of their first NAP and uh, submitted them to the NFCCC. Around 20, uh, sorry, 91 countries have submitted proposals to the GCF for NAP formulated, NAP formulation. So there's a significant uh, number of uh, countries awaiting or uh, in the process of preparing their uh, first national adaptation plan. Efforts uh, for the formulation and implementation of NAPs and the preparation of and the submission of NDCs can be mutually enforcing. In fact, uh, many of the countries that we have supported in the preparation of the NDCs and their NDC implementation plans have directly referenced their NAPs or future NAPs if they are still in the middle of the, the, the preparation and have included experts, excerpts, sorry, excerpts of their priority needs in their NAPs, in their NDCs, sorry. Uh, increasingly, such countries, uh, uh, especially uh, small island developing states and vulnerable coastal states, view adaptation and resilience as crucial elements in safeguarding any investment made to their countries, uh, especially those earmarked for potential mitigation contributions such as renewable energy infrastructure and, uh, and the like. Indeed, uh, both NDCs and NAP uh, provide a framework for international climate finance. And these plans set uh, the basis for national and subnational policies and element frameworks to drive low carbon and climate resilient developments. These plans also set clear signals to align actions from governments, private sector, civil society, international partners with national, with national short, short term and medium term goals in, in, in their climate agenda. Um, these plans can also help uh, development partners and, um, and national planners alike to identify specific actions, initiatives to, to mainstream into their, sub uh, their national and subnational planning and public financial management systems. Uh, this also helps us identify investment priorities, entry points, and entry other entry points for development pipelines of, uh, for the development of uh, bankable projects. So where, where do these the needs lie? Access to finance, of course, as uh, we all know, remains a chief constraint in achieving Paris Agreement goals. Uh, reduce, to, reduce climate spending due to COVID-19 responses alongside with capital flight, revenue loss, uh, increased debt have made investments more difficult even more difficult th these days. And finance is one of the most requested areas of support in the partnership with almost every country submitting at least one finance request to the NDC partnership. The partnership is supporting its members to translate the NDCs into feasible investments and to mobilize financial resources to make the NDCs a reality. But countries need for, for uh, uh, the country's needs for climate finance lie beyond just resources. Based on the data that we have collected, on the requests for support that we have received, as well as the NDC action plans uh, from member countries, a finance request can be classified into five major categories. 
First is the development of climate finance strategies and financial roadmaps. Uh, second is the integration of NDCs into planning and national budgets and revenue. Then we have the project and program financing and resource mobilization. Uh, fourth is the preparation of bankable projects and pipeline. And last but not the least, and it's something that uh, uh, we're getting more and more requests on, is the private sector engagement in NDC implementation. So while member countries' finance needs are relatively equal and across uh, five of these categories, <clears throat> sorry, and uh, I will be showing a bit more about this in, in the next slide, institutional and development partner response is heavily way toward technical assistance rather than project and program financing requests or the development of uh, pipelines, uh, project pipelines for potential uh, international uh, uh, climate financing, uh, international climate financing. So the partnership is now focusing its efforts to strengthen its impact and uh, mobilizing NDC financing and resources at scale, including through the development of our own financing strategy, which we'll, we will be launching later this year uh, during COP. As, I, as reflected, uh, and the, the data that you're looking right now is based on our internal database, uh, which looks at around 96 developing member countries who we have received some uh, form of request since the inception of, uh, since, and since the NDC partnership became operational around 2017. As reflected in this request, the NDC, uh, the, the access to international climate finance remains as a priority for many de de uh, developing countries so they can implement their NDC targets. Uh, just looking at the, the chart alone, you can see that 70% of uh, most of the countries uh, be, are looking really for support to mobilize project and program financing and resources. The, while uh, second, uh, the most requested area, uh, as I have said earlier, is through uh, the uh, by by um, supporting them to enhance engagement with the private sector through NDC investments. These top two areas of request and support are really relevant for, for today's uh, conversation. So in terms of the, the support that, that the NDC partnership are providing uh, to, to our member countries and by NDC partnership, what I mean is uh, uh, this, uh, what I meant by this is that all of the support are provided or mobilized through our member uh, organization. And this includes uh, countries um, uh, countries that are a member of the European Union, UNDP, uh, World Bank, and uh, many other IFIs that uh, you will be uh, listening to later, development organizations that you will be listening to later. So at the country level, the NDC partnership support our members by strengthening their access to finance, uh, setting, uh, by, and, and this is done by strengthening our engagement or the, the engagement of the Climate Change Coordinating Unit or agency to the ministries of finance, planning, and other line ministries that are relevant to climate action. We also provide a space for matchmaking to make sure that the country's needs are aligned with the donor countries or development members, uh, member organizations resources. And we also catalyze investments through the preparation of what we call is a project identification, uh, project uh, investment notes of PINs. Uh, this is practically uh, a concept note that we can use to um, initiate conversations with uh, private sector, with uh, international finance institutions and uh, MTBs or other uh, interested parties that may be able to uh, provide more upfront uh, work or support more upfront work to take the project idea or the project concept notes into a more mature stage. We also do this by embedding economic and climate finance advisors in the ministries of finance, ministries of economy, or in, in, in at times also at the, to the national designated authorities of the GCF. Uh, in, in, in the future, we are also planning to mobilize advi finance advisors at the sectoral agencies where we think um, this really uh, should be where, where more, more of, uh, would, should be given more focus so now that they have already identified the sectoral targets through their NDCs. And recognizing the fiscal burden of COVID-19 pandemic, 
we have also launched what we call the economic advisory in several, uh, uh, at least a couple of countries in, in, in Eastern Europe has, uh, were able to, to receive such a support. And all in all, we were able to deploy around 45 uh, embedded advisors in 34 countries uh, through the support of 13 uh, delivery partners in an effort to align uh, the country's COVID-19 recovery with uh, climate action, especially really trying to align uh, the, their recovery programs with their uh, recently launched or recently submitted NDCs. And at the global level, uh, we are leveraging our network members and their knowledge of and information to support countries by strengthening partnerships and engagement with key climate finance stakeholders at the global level, holding peer-to-peer -peer exchanges, and by systematically highlighting gaps and areas in need of support and funding opportunities with donors, IFIs, and other regional or global NDC-related initiatives. And some of this uh, you know already, and there are, the NDC partnership is involved in ongoing consultations and collaborations with many of these initiatives, including the World Bank's Climate Support Facility, UNDP's Climate Promise, as well as the Climate Promise Plus, and ADB's NDC Advance, and the NAMA facility, uh, which recently just uh, concluded their call. Uh, we're also uh, holding discussions, uh, bilateral discussions with GCF, and some exchanges with uh, certain uh, uh, certain governments, like the uh, government of Germany, uh, through BMZ, KFW. Uh, we also have um, ongoing collaborations with the Climate Finance Advisors Network, which will be deploying uh, climate finance advisors in, in uh, different countries uh, very soon, as well as uh, CIF, uh, Let's GP, MIGA, as well as uh, uh, Get Invest and other, other relevant uh, related uh, initiatives. So what, what we're trying to do really is make sure that, as I've said uh, earlier, um, really broaden the horizon and broaden the reach of the NDC implementation plans to, 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 to the supply. Uh, so trying to match really the demand coming from the countries with the supply that's available from the global development community. So next slide. So while our members uh, and partners provide extensive TA, technical assistance and capacity building, as I've said, and I want to reiterate, uh, there remains of gaps in, in support for related uh, requests related to project preparation and resource mobilization at scale and speed that's necessary to implement NDCs. Right now, we are working to address these challenges by supporting countries in uh, mainstream climate change and uh, development plans, sorry, by, by, by also engaging with the coalition of finance ministers and supporting work on Helsinki Principle 6, and as well as actively encouraging uh, engagement of finance ministries in the preparation and implementation of NDCs. Um, what you can see on the slides is some of the results that we have delivered so far in the past three or four years when, uh, since, since we became operational. And uh, as I've said, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Um, and, and, and through the, 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 the development project concept notes or project information notes, we have, uh, uh, we, we are uh, facilitating a potential investment of now at around $208 million worth of uh, climate finance projects and, and around, uh, if, if I recall correctly, around 10, 10 countries. And we are, we are hoping to, to, to provide well, more more sustained efforts towards this through, of course, through the support of our member organizations and member countries, and um, and we can expand further on the this uh, and on on these types of support once we have launched the the finance strategy of the NDC partnership. Um, I will not be going through in detail on this uh, on this slide, but uh, just to let you know that we are uh, delivering some. Uh, climate related support, uh, climate finance related support in Armenia, Albania, uh, primarily through right now through the Economic Advisor Initiative, where, for example, in, in, in Albania, World Bank deployed an embedded advisor uh, who supported uh, the costing of the NDC document and, action, and as well as the action plan and, and through, through the Climate Action Enhancement 
package as well as the climate promise uh, UNDP and FAO are supporting the capacity development of stakeholders national stakeholders to integrate NDCs into the national planning and budgeting we have also deployed an economic advisor in in in, in, in Armenia through the support of uh, Asian Development Bank and is now working together with the Ministry of Economy and aligning COVID-19 recovery packages and public financing with climate uh, considerations. Um, in, in, uh, in terms of the project uh, information note that I've shared earlier, in, 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 in Jordan and Rwanda, they are the, this, in, this, this concept notes are, uh, the concept notes cover investments related to the, the enhancement and sustainability of climate resilience and of big cultivation through the installation of uh, solar photovoltaic uh, water uh, solar pumping systems solar powered pumping systems and the planting of uh, salt uh, saline, uh, saline tolerant crops and land preparation and in Rwanda they will be developing uh, the rural um, a rural electrification program um, through the installation of around 100 renewable energy mini grids, uh, combination of hydro and solar, uh, each with an average size of around 25 kilowatts uh, each. So I'd like to end my keynote by highlighting that uh, climate considerations cannot be separated from, um, from, from development. An active uh, agenda on climate uh, represents substantial opportunities and offset and, and should should ideally offset uh, development risks. I was just speaking yesterday with one of our advisors that we have mobilized in one of the member countries in, in East Asia. And for years, um, uh, civil society organizations, NGOs have been advocating the Ministry of Energy to invest more substantially into clean energy and renewable energy. And again, for years, uh, they, they have been lobbying heavily for the inclusion of energy into the country's NDC, but uh, to no avail. Well, until recently, he, he shared that the minister was not really totally against renewable energy investments or climate change. The crux of the hesitancy in, in the ministry lies on two main things. Uh, one is the lack of demonstrable analytics or real world experience, uh, uh, proof of concept, as you will. That, that transitioning will not substantially increase uh, the country's power rates. And second is this remaining pervasive view within the bureaucracy that transitioning to new technology will always be expensive. So while you may disagree, uh, these few points are quite valid as these are angled, uh, anchored really on a more grounded agenda, which is the end consumer's pockets, the, the, the the voters' pockets, uh, uh, for lack of a better term. We cannot really dissociate climate agenda from the national socioeconomic agenda. This, this two should be mutually reinforcing. And I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but we should always keep in mind that one agenda should take care not to undermine the other. And here I'd like to echo a quote from the Bank of England staff working paper titled Climate Change and Macroeconomy. Uh, uh, climate policy should not be seen in isolation and should rather be considered as an integral part of the broader policy agenda to promote economic growth. And with that, I, of course, end my, my keynote presentation. If you would like, uh, thanks again for watching and listening. If you'd like to know more about the NC Partnership, please feel free to visit our website and reach us to email or to our social network service pages. Thanks again and have a great day.